So if I wanted to jump, what's one of the first things I would do? Right? If I, if I was going to jump, what do I need to do? In anticipation, right? So I'm going to gather my momentum by doing a squash. Notice how it keeps your volume, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to have my normal frame at 101. Let's say 110, I'm going to do my squash. Let's put it like that. So I know I don't want, I, I don't want the squash when I'm jumping. I want it to be stretched, right? And then I want it to be in the air. Well, what's happening with this? It's kind of even spacing, right? And I'm easing in and out of my squash and stretch. That's not good, right? And what else can we do? We can also probably add a pre-anticipation. So we might want to stretch before our initial squash. We're kind of losing our squash, right? It's getting really lost. So we have our ball at zero here at the beginning. Let's keep him at zero till frame five. I'm going to move these guys down a little bit. Okay, so now we have different timing. Now we have a pre-anticipation, our squash. We have something going on here with our curves. But we probably want our jump to go like this with our motion path, right? A nice parabola and a nice arc. What does my direction of my stretch say? It's pointing in the wrong direction. Okay, so we definitely want to fix that. To make sure we're pointing in the direction we want it to go in. And you can use your nudge tool as well. I'm using my alt and arrow keys to translate on my screen. So you can use that if you want to as well. So let's add another key in here. Let's let's Put the top of our arc in here. So where is our ball at the top? And it's not, it's not stretched anymore because it's at the top. Remember, if we're at the top of our parabola, we're not going up anymore, but we're not going down. So it's our weightless moment. So we're going to be normal size at the top. Right, guys? So at the top of my parabola, I want to be normal size. I'm going to put my rotation to zero there. And then we want him to make contact with the ground, this new ground. So let's shoot that out and see what we have so far. We're starting to get a better anticipation. Let's work on it some more. We have some issues here with our parabola. It's really pointy right now, right? With our parabola, the motion path of our bounce is really pointy. So that's a problem, right? So we're going to fix that. We can clearly see it in our, in our Y translation here. Because remember, the side view, which your camera is a side view, and the Y translation are going to be a literal representation. And then at the beginning, I want, to, I want to emphasize my anticipations a little bit more. So I want, to, I want to work on my timing for my anticipations. They're really linear right now. So let's do that too. So that's with my squash and stretch. And I might also add in another pre-anticipation. Because pre-anticipations are so terrific. So going back to my squash and stretch right now, I'm going to add a pre-anticipation there. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to make mine flat, flat tangents there. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to do keys, add in between. See how that moves everything later, moves everything after later? And then I can just press G again to repeat that move. So you can go right mouse, keys, add in between. Remember, G repeats the last move you did. So I kind of want to hold here a couple frames. I'm going to work on having a little bit of a hold. And then we will soften that later. So then we have our translate Y. We definitely don't want that to be linear. We want that to be, we can have it 
Remember, there's different ways to work on our parabola. When, when it's linear like this, this is not good. So the best first thing to do is make it flat. The other thing to do is you can open your tangents, right, and make it wider. And then another thing you can do is um, you can add more keys. So I could go here and I could go right mouse, add key, and I could move it, right? So everybody knows those are the different ways to adjust your curves. Okay, so we're using the same kind of principles here that we would have used for our bouncing ball. It's kind of the same idea for your parabola, right? We know kind of what it, we want it to look like. So we're kind of using the same principles that we've already gone over. But let's shoot it out to see what we have so far. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So I want to... Um, have more time at the top of my jump, right, the top of my parabola. It looks, it still looks a little pointy and a little fast, so I can add more time there at the top of my parabola. I want to make sure that my squash, I, I, I'm, I'm liking my anticipations to my squash and stretch. Do you see how now it, we don't miss the story because of all the pre-anticipations I put there? Do you see how we have a slight pre-anticipation down? then another pre-anticipation up, and then another pre-anticipation down, the, the anticipation down, so I don't miss it. Does everybody see that? So you can put as many of those as you want and exaggerate them as much as you want because that's part of your decision-making process. The anticipation is part of your decision-making process. I'm going to exaggerate these a little bit just for the sake of understanding. Okay, so I'm using that um, overshoot with my squash and stretch to show a settle at the end as well now. So similar to my anticipation squash and stretch, does everybody see that? So it's showing that I have residual energy that I'm trying to get rid of. That's the point of the overshoots. Okay, and it's also a good way to show the flexibility of your character.